Hey friends, Ash here with Gen Sense. Today I've got another requested video. I know that right now in the middle of summer is not really the opportune time to be wearing tobacco fragrances, but so many of you requested this through my email address that I figured let's go ahead and knock it out. So as you can tell by the title of the video today, I'm gonna to be going over some of my favorite tobacco scents or fragrances that have tobacco as one of the main notes in the scent. So let's jump into this. Now I know that the video says 10 of my favorite fragrances and 10 of these I will go into more detail on, but I'm gonna mention some other fragrances as well, just kind of in passing as I work through this list. And this is not in any particular order, so it's not from number 10 to number one, where number 10 is my least favorite of the bunch, but still a favorite, and number one is my favorite of all time because it really depends on what mood I'm in on that particular day. You know, things could switch and change. And this is also not my definitive list, where if it's not mentioned here, it's not one of my favorites. These are just the first ones that came to mind, and it's possible as time goes that I'll add more on, like a follow-up video. First up, Pure Havan by Terry Mugler. I've talked about this a bunch. It's made a bunch of lists on my channel as well. This one is a tester bottle, so it has some of the notes right here on the back. Fresh tobacco leaves, honeyed tobacco accord, patchouli, and bitter cocoa. This fragrance is one of my most complimented fragrances of all time. Believe it or not, it just works very well off my skin. I wore this to the office so many times. I, I really lost count and in the entire mugler amen line this one is my favorite with pure malt coming in right underneath this one so this is going to give you a very sweet honeyed tobacco and some people will actually say that this smells similar to search off naxos or that naxos smells similar to pure havan and there is a little bit of a similarity there between the two. Performance on this is great, and this one is just very nice, sweet, honey, vanilla smelling tobacco with a bit of cocoa and patchouli as it dries down. So that one, Pure Havan, one of my favorites. So is this one, Tom Ford, Tobacco Vani. This one is gonna be more unisex than Pure Havan is. Women can pull this off as well as men. It doesn't lean feminine or anything though, so uh, don't worry if you're a guy and you've never smelled Tobacco Vani, it's uh it's easy to pull off easy to wear there's dried fruit and spice in here along with tobacco and vanilla and a good amount of vanilla at that this one to me is one of the quintessential tom ford private blend fragrances it's one of the first fragrances that i think of when i think of tom ford it's really this one oud wood and tuscan leather and those are the ones that jumped on my mind first and then maybe other things like gray vetiver but tobacco vani is one of the must own Tom Ford fragrances. And one thing you're going to notice with a lot of these scents is that they're sweet, sweet tobacco. And whether it's sweetened up with vanilla or dried fruits or vanilla or whatever, most of these tobacco fragrances here today are going to be on the sweeter side of things. That's generally how I like my tobacco fragrances. Some people like them more green, maybe even a little more earthy, you know, things in that direction very far away from sweet but when i think tobacco at least as far as fragrances go i think sweet usually you know pipe tobacco stuff like that so yeah tobacco vanille another one that i love up next michael kors for men i've talked about this fragrance before in the past one thing you have to be aware of if you're looking for this fragrance is you have to get the correct michael kors for men because they discontinued this one and then came out with another one, Michael Kors for Men, which is in the same bottle style, same cap style, all that, but the writing is going to be on the side of the bottle rather than up here at the top. And if you get a much older bottle of this version, it won't even say Michael Kors at the top, it will just say Michael. But if you get the fragrance with the, uh, the writing here at the top of the bottle with the smaller font size, that's gonna be the one that I'm talking about. The other one, again, is gonna have a bottle that looks the same, just a uh, different font, and Michael Kors is written in a different spot. That being said, the other fragrance smells good too, but it's not really a tobacco fragrance. This one is. So this one has dried fruits, plum, incense, and tobacco. And for the longest time, I have viewed this fragrance as a sort of hidden gem tobacco scent. It doesn't get talked about very often, of course, 
that's probably because it's discontinued and it is from Michael Kors, which is not a fragrance house that gets talked about a whole lot, but this one, fantastic. Smells great. And it is still available at discounters. So you can still find this for a pretty good price. And just on a personal level, I like this pretty much just as much as this. I think Michael Kors is fantastic. It is sweet because of the dried fruits, but it's not as sweet as most of the fragrances in here. That's gonna be because it does have notes like incense to help offset that sweetness a little bit, provide a bit of a contrast and uh, the plum in there, really nice as well. Let me mention fragrance here really quickly. I'm not gonna pull the bottle out because it's one I just wanna run through very quickly. Uh, again, I said I was gonna mention a few other fragrances. Field Notes from Paris by Inica is a fragrance I have loved for a long, long, long time. That one has uh, tobacco leaf and also white tobacco. So it's gonna be not as deep as a lot of these tobacco fragrances I'm talking about today. More of a springtime fragrance you know, a fall time fragrance. It's uh, not really what I consider at all a winter time fragrance. It's also got coriander in there. It's got beeswax instead of honey, you know, beeswax, so a, a slight difference. And uh, that one, I just, I just absolutely love. I love that one. It's a bit of a hidden gem for me. So yeah, Field Notes from Paris. Just wanted to bring that up really quickly. And then also uh, Burberry London. Bring that up really quickly as well. Burberry London, a lot of people will say, smells like the holidays, it smells like, you know, Christmas time or Thanksgiving, you know, November, December, all the holidays going around that part of the year. London smells like that. If you could encapsulate that and bottle it, a lot of people say it would smell like Burberry London. It has spice, it's got leather, it has a port wine kind of accord and tobacco, of course. It's a fantastic smelling fragrance. Performance is not great, but typically you can pick it up for a low price. And uh, I do love the smell of that as well. Okay, back into the official list for today. Tobacco Oud, yeah, another Tom Ford. This one I had to pull out because I fell in love with this fragrance the first time I smelled it. It was immediate. The first time I smelled this from a sample, I was just like, oh my God, I have to have that. And I, I bought it right away. Now again, like Tobacco Vini, you have some of the notes of the fragrance right there in the name of the fragrance, Tobacco and Oud. There's also spices in here and whiskey. That gives it kind of a boozy feel. That's what I pick up off the top, especially. A lot of that booze, so that whiskey mixing with tobacco. The oud in the background a little bit comes out more as the fragrance dries down, but it's never assaulting or too aggressive. It does have good performance off my skin though, very good. This one, my wife hated, hated when I first got it. I would wear this any opportunities that I could get, just as much as possible because I loved the way it smells and I still do but my wife absolutely hated that. It was her least favorite fragrance of my entire collection, she said at that time. Uh, over time, over the years, over her smelling it more, she's grown to like it, but fair warning, she hated it at first. Had to grow on her. Next up, Cher Guy by Serge Luton. This one, along with Tobacco Vini, actually mentioned in a uh, video that I did yesterday. A niche beginner's guide video. And the reason I mention those is because I do really love them. Now this one is gonna give you a different smell than anything else featured on this list today. This one smells like its own thing. It does not smell like pure Havan, tobacco vanille. It does not take any notes from those fragrances at all. And those fragrances are fairly popular in the way they're done. You might smell other niche or designer fragrances and go, mm, it smells like it could have been inspired by whatever, X, Y, Z. This does not smell like that. It's got honey, amber, incense, hay, and tobacco as some of the notes in the fragrance. It is sweet, a little bit dusty, almost syrupy at times. It smells amazing. And Serge Luton is a brand that typically you can pick up at discounters for a pretty good price, even though they are niche fragrances. They have gone to a different bottle style than uh, this one here, but still worth picking up, worth checking out in my opinion. Okay, let's uh, go with this one. Dolce & Gabbana, the one Eau de Parfum. Now, this one, probably out of everything I've mentioned so far, is the least tobacco-y of the bunch. Tobacco is a note in here. You can pick it up. But this one is going to be more about amber and spices like ginger and cardamom. There is tobacco in here. As I said, you can pick it up, but it falls behind the amber. The spices really give you that kind of sex appeal. 
that this fragrance is known for. It's a big date night fragrance, a big night out fragrance, big compliment puller. When I think of designer fragrances that I've loved over the years that I've worn a bunch, the one does come to mind. It's one that I, I fell in love with right away, kind of like tobacco oud first time I smelled it. And uh, the tobacco in here, you know, brings back a lot of good memories. So for me, the one has to make the list. Even though again, it's more amber and spice than it is true tobacco. Let me run through a couple other fragrances really quick that I'm not gonna go into too much detail on. Uh, one is called Frank Number no. Three, and that one I did not really like when I first got it. I paid full retail, bought it from Lucky Scent, and uh, when I got it in, sprayed it on, I thought, it's too syrupy, you know, not enough tobacco. It's just this really syrupy, sweet kind of fragrance with a heavy apple, an apple syrupy kind of tobacco. There's a bit of spice in there as well, but it's really heavy on, like I said, syruped, sweet tobacco. And when I first got it in, it wasn't what I was expecting and I didn't really like it, didn't care for it. Over time, it has grown on me more though. And now I like it as kind of a change of pace type of uh, tobacco scent. But that one is one that had to grow on me over years because it took that long <laughs> for me to really appreciate it at all. And then uh, one other fragrance, Intenso by Dolce & Gabbana. This is a flanker to Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme. Uh, some people will tell you that Intenso smells a little bit closer to how Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme used to smell when it first came out. Now Intenso does not get a whole lot of love. A lot of people dislike it. It does have uh, tobacco, of course, it's one of the main notes, but there's also hay in there. Uh, it doesn't smell the same as Shergi. I know Shergi has that note as well, but it smells completely different than Shergi. There's also uh, lavender in Intenso, which is uh, actually much more prominent to my nose than the hay is. It's tobacco and lavender mainly, and again, it throws it back to the original Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme a bit. I think Intenso is better than the current formulation of Dolce & Gabbana Pour Homme, so I would suggest that one over D&G Pour Homme. Okay, let's grab another. Varvedos Vintage. Yeah, this is probably my favorite from uh, John Barbados in general. It has suede fur, rhubarb and tonka, and of course, tobacco. This one just smells amazing for fall time. You can pick it up for a good price. Longevity, projection, maybe not the best, especially compared to some of these other ones here today, but uh, for the price, I give it a pass. It's not supremely tobacco forward. You do pick up the tobacco. It's just there are so many other things working in with the tobacco. That's what makes this one interesting. It's not super simple, especially when you consider the price. So with this one, you're gonna get some woodiness, you're gonna get that suede leather and tobacco all together. And then you get that nice little pop, that little tart pop of rhubarb. Barbados Vintage smells amazing. Like I said, probably my favorite John Barbados off the top of my head and had to bring that one up. Up next, Gucci by Gucci, poor ohm. Not a great name, Gucci by Gucci. And I think now it might just be Gucci Borum, but yeah, still great fragrance. This one, like Farvedos Vintage, has a lot going in and mixing with the tobacco, so it's not a fragrance I would say is just all about the tobacco, but the tobacco mixing with the other notes really elevates the scent as a whole. So this one has cypress, violet, bergamot, and patchouli along with that tobacco. And actually I get a lot of the cypress, especially off the top, and that melding with everything else, oof, killer, great fall time fragrance, good springtime fragrance as well. This is kind of one of those forgotten Gucci fragrances. Doesn't get talked about a whole bunch. I mean, really actually Gucci doesn't get talked about that much, does it? Doesn't get talked about a whole lot, doesn't get worn by a whole lot of people. And it's one of my favorite fragrances that features tobacco pretty prominently. We're in the home stretch here. Up next, Diptyque Volutes. This one smells amazing. This is one of my absolute favorites out of all of these. I think it's really overlooked as honey, iris, uh, dried fruits, tobacco, and uh, some resins in here as well. And this one is just off the chain. This one smells fantastic. Diptyque is a house that I really, really love. Don't talk about them a whole bunch, but every fragrance that I have purchased from Diptyque, I've been happy with. Um, I think I have six now, so not a huge number, but I love each and every one of them. And this one is one of my absolute favorites. So this one is gonna have your honey, your dried fruit, along with the tobacco. So it's gonna have that sweetness, which again, very common in these fragrances, but it switches things up a bit, especially with the iris that's in here, which is not a note that you find all that often mixed together with tobacco, but it works so well in here. The resins provide some warmth, especially as this dries down. Fantastic fragrance from Diptyque. 
and sometimes, not always, but sometimes you can get really good deals on diptyque fragrances at discounters, which is actually where I got this one. And that's gonna take us to the last one in this video, Spice Bomb Extreme, which in my opinion is an improvement over the original Spice Bomb. It has oud, tobacco, spice, of course, and uh, black vanilla as some of the notes in this fragrance. And essentially this takes that Spice Bomb DNA from the original and ramps up the sweetness a little bit, actually with the black vanilla, makes it less rough around the edges, maybe a little bit less aggressive with the spiciness in the open, and overall comes together as a more well-balanced fragrance than the original Spice Bomb. Again, nothing against the original Spice Bomb, it's still really nice, but extreme, just a bit better. The performance here, fantastic. It lasts all day, projects very heavily, and uh, this one is gonna be that type of tobacco that's mixed very well with spices. Not really a big surprise considering the name of the fragrance. So if you're looking for a tobacco that has a big focus on vanilla along with a little bit of oud as it dries down and a good dose of cinnamon, check this one out. You won't be disappointed. And that one's gonna wrap up this video, this list of some of my favorite tobacco fragrances or fragrances that have a prominent tobacco note. This is not all of them. This is not definitive. Like I said, there are many other fragrances that could have made this list that didn't, and I probably will do a follow-up in the future to showcase or highlight some more of the other ones. All right, guys, it's gonna do it for me. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Thanks for all your support. Stay safe out there. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.